What's going on guys? 8BitGlitz79 here and I'm going to do a bit of a serious video here. Uh, it's kind of a response video to RetroMikey78 who's a YouTuber I follow. started following him because he did BGM unboxings and Retro Game Treasure unboxings. Um, he's since cancelled those services for, uh, for reasons that don't pertain to this video. Uh, but uh, he kept a Retro Rec Room it fit his collecting purposes better but he just received information that they are canceling that service now so it brought up a subject he, he talked about and I'm kind of doing a response to that he was saying is the price of well let me take a step back the reason the retro rec room is stopping is because their number one supplier of games is taking a different business avenue or something and they won't be able to supply them anymore so, Mikey said, is the price of games or emulation destroying retro collecting? Um, is there a video game crash coming? Uh, and why are retro stores seem to be closing? At least in his area, he's mentioned uh, several stores that have just closed out of blue, uh, closed their doors. Uh, not that they weren't making a profit, but they weren't made, it was marginal. They weren't making a big enough profit to keep, uh, keep the doors open. So I thought I would do a response on that because I had some ideas and thoughts about that. And it's something that's come up in my own head um, before. Now, I don't think that we're headed towards a video game crash like in the early, late 70s, early 80s with the Atari and the Intellivision and such uh, where Nintendo had to come in and kind of save it. Uh, I, I, I don't see video games falling off like... I don't see that no one's going to buy the PS5 or the Xbox 2 or even the Xbox 3 or PS6 at this point. I think it's stronger than ever uh, due to some things that I'll get into. Uh, but do I think that there might be a video, retro video game crash? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I think an aspect of retro gaming might crash to, to a point while other parts of retro gaming are just going to increase um, so because I've been collecting since I was a kid I mean since I got my first Nintendo when I was seven whatever I was um, in Atari 2600 and uh, it's just been that different parts of my life have been a big collecting or not collecting a lot obviously when I'm a kid I don't have a lot of money so I don't I didn't gather a lot of games at that time as I got older and got summer jobs I uh, started working after school and things like that. I started going to the flea markets. And at the flea markets at that time, this is you're talking the mid 90s, late 90s, I guess. Um, I, you could get NES games dirt cheap. They were practically given away because nobody cared about it. Nobody cared about NES. Uh, the Super uh, or the Super Nintendo, uh, everybody was up to the next generation. Um, and I was not even looking at that at that point. I was still stuck on the NES, Super NES Genesis Master System. Um, so, I mean, I could go and get games. There was a guy at the flea market. I could get games $2 a piece, and it didn't matter. It didn't matter the title. I could be getting Super Mario Brothers, or I could be getting Little Samson. He never had a Little Samson, at least. <laughs> I don't know if he did. I wasn't aware of Little Samson at the time. But my point is, it didn't matter what title it was. It was $2. Because nobody was buying them and nobody cared. So that's how I amassed most of my NES collection that you've seen behind me in my videos. I'd say 80% of that was the flea market guy. I would, I would go there and buy 10 games a week for 20 bucks. I'd get 10 games. Um, I mean, that's how I got this. You probably can't see because of the light. Metal Storm. I got that for $2 from that guy. I know, I remember buying that one from him. $2. That game now is $100 on price charting. So, um, I don't know where I'm going with that, but <laughs> my point is that there's going to be cycles. Am I going to think that Metal Storm's ever going to be $2 again? No. Uh, do I think the price is going to go down? Uh, yes, because I can show maybe in a little while maybe I'll show if you look at the graph and price charting you can see how it's gone up and there's a time frame where it was even higher than it is now and now it's coming down 
Um, it's going to level off at some point. What that price is, who knows? But it's going to do that. Um, he's saying that there's a lot of people who are charging at price charting or more. And people need to look at that as a mint copy should be that price. And I agree with that. I totally agree with that. If, if the game is mint, that's, that's the price it should be, so to speak. But if it's got marker marks on it, stickers, label damage, you need to be knocking off some dollars off that because that is not right. That is, I wouldn't ask you to buy a 2015 Dodge at the price of a 2020 Dodge. Oh, just because the inside is nice uh, or it gets you from A to B, but the outside is all rusty. No, I don't expect you to pay a new car price for that. Um, it's, it's kind of a weird analogy, but you get my point uh, with that. So, and then with this cycle thing, I noticed that there's been a lot of talk about people selling off already their collections. Now, I see that there are a couple different kind of collectors. There's the collectors like me who have been collecting all their life. I, I can say that there was a period where I kind of stopped when my kids were born. I focused on my career. I, all my game stuff was put away for the most part. I didn't have time for it. Um, and I've only just gotten back into the last two years. And in that five-year like hiatus, I was astonished at what the prices were like when I got back into it. Um, conventions were never a thing when I was a kid or a teenager. That's a new thing, at least in our area and to me. Um, so that just goes to show the popularity right now of retro gaming but um, where am I going with that sorry my focus is getting off track here um, then he said uh, about the, the price charting it's for mint copies that's exactly what it should be you shouldn't be charging uh, price charting for carts that are look like they went through a war or something that's not right um, I'm just looking at some notes here, trying to collect my thoughts. Um, now, I think it's a generational thing. Uh, as I was saying, uh, I'm going to go back to what I was saying, the two types of collectors. There's the collectors like me who've been collecting all their life, love video games, and they're going to continue collecting as far as I'm aware till the, the day I'm no longer able to collect, if you know what I mean. Uh, as far as other collector types, it's the nostalgic collector. The person who just put away, grew up, got rid of all their game stuff, never had it anymore, and then said, oh, I would love to play Mario Brothers again. Let me go out and buy an NES and Mario Brothers and, and, and play. And then, oh, I love that. Let me go get DuckTales now. Let me go get this game and that game. And then they start going in a few years. They're, they're, they're hot and heavy. And then they reach that I grew up again mode. Where they say, why do I have this? I don't need this anymore. I'm bored with it. Sell it. And then that's going to flood the market. And I think we're getting towards that that point for those type of, of collectors to kind of fall off. Because there's been talk already online about people selling their stuff and doing stuff. Jay from the Game Chasers and, 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 uh, and, and uh, Billy. But they're doing it for purposes of making their movie. So it's kind of a different thing, but I've seen other people saying, why do I need this retro stuff? I have emulation, I have digital things, they're releasing these mini consoles and things like that. So those people, yeah, and they're going to flood the market with, with merchandise, and that will drive prices down as well. Um, as far as stores closing their doors, uh, I've seen that since I was a kid to now. I've seen cycles where stores that have been around for a while, all of a sudden they're gone and there's no retro stores and then they pick come back up because the popularity comes back up and if stores are starting to close already it's either one the market's getting too flooded with retail stores um, so there, there's just too much it's just like too much product out there and so they can't you know you don't want to open up a same store next to a guy who's selling the same stuff you want to be unique so if the market's getting flooded with stores that's not going to be sustainable um, second is again the popularity oh I got bored now with my Nintendo I had my nostalgic moment I'm dumping it I just went to a retro store not too long ago and I, I, I laughed and I asked my daughter can you count these N64's you see in the glass case there she counted there were almost 40 N64 consoles stacked up inside the uh, display case I mean at some point 
it's like they're not going to be able to get rid of things and they're going to have to bring the prices down to just get rid of them because they're going to have too much stock. Um, now, the NES and Super NES nostalgic collectors are going to go off and a new generation is going to come up. My cousin, uh, my cousin, my nephew, uh, so my sister is about 10 years older than me, so I, I was a young uncle and I had a nephew. So when I was a teenager, I was playing games and he was a little kid, like five, six, and I would be playing games and he'd play with me and stuff. And I think, I like to think that I got him kind of into it and he's a big gamer and stuff and I was helping my sister move uh, a few months back and we we're hanging out at her house and moving stuff and he was there obviously helping and he said oh my god I can't believe well what, what was it I'm oh, sorry I was talking about the any uh, the, the classic systems coming out and then the, the Nintendo online just came out at that time and and they have the Nintendo games on there and stuff and he said I'm so sick of this now, I can't remember exactly what he said, so I'm going to make my own paraphrase here. But he's basically he's, he's like, I'm sick of Nintendo suckling at the teat of the NES and Super NES. And in fact, they're not even doing the Super NES now. It's just the mini console. They haven't even released games on the, on the um, online yet for that. But he said he's just sick of the NES stuff because he doesn't care about that stuff. And when he said he wants to see N64 because when he was 5 and 6 and 7... The N64 and the PlayStation 1 were his, was his Atari 2600 and NES like it was for me. So that's what he's nostalgic for right now. Uh, not that he doesn't already have one and have games for it and collect for it, but he wants to see a mini console. He wants to see those games available on the online service. So that generation is getting old enough to have disposable income, be able to get the things they couldn't as kids and relive that. So it's a whole new wave and generation that's coming up. And I kind of got that feeling when I was at Too Many Games, when I was looking around, and I could see the, uh, their NES people, and these people are N64, based on their age, and, and they didn't even look at the NES stuff. They didn't care. They were, they were at P PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and N64 stuff. And uh, so that's, that's what I'm seeing. So I'm going to see... It'd be interesting to see how prices of those things are going because I think they're already rising in price. Um, I mean, uh, the, one of the retro stores I went to back in the day in 1999 2000 was Fantasy Realms, and it's no longer, we called it the hole in the wall because of where it was located. <laughs> um, but as you see here, I never removed the price tag. I, I try not to remove price tags from stuff. And so you can see here my Turbo Graphics. Uh, you're not gonna be able to see it, unfortunately. Twenty nine ninety nine, and that came with Keith Courage, of course, controller and the hookups. Uh, same store, my top loader. You hear twenty four ninety nine Fantasy Realms. Didn't come with the dog bone, but that's all right. But that was purchased like nineteen ninety nine two thousand, and now I mean it was a Turbo Graphics, like a hundred bucks more. Uh, uh, top loader or something like that. I don't know. It's It just goes to show that no one cared about those things back then and so you could just practically it was a steal um, back then. Uh, same games, Fantasy Realms. I still have the stickers on them. Beetlejuice, two ninety nine, which is now a, like a $20 game. You're not going to be able to see that but trust me it's two ninety nine on there. And Dragon Warrior, which isn't that expensive a game anyways, but $1.99, same time frame. Now it's like an $8 game or something. Um, and if you check price charting, this game back in like 2000, whatever we can look, it was like 90 cents or something. So I got ripped off maybe, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that makes a point or not, but I just thought I would add that in there. I'm probably kind of rambling now, so I'm going to probably try to sum this up a little bit. So... Basically, what I'm saying is I don't think there's going to be a video game crash. I think there's going to be a retro game crash in the sense of certain consoles, certain types of games are going to come down in price. Um, they're not going to come drastically down to where you're going to get flea market prices, but you're going to start being able to get some games at the cheaper prices than you are today or a few years ago. Um, I'm already seeing prices come down in certain things. Uh, and then a new generation is going to come in. And then eventually there's going to be the PS3 generation and the Xbox 360 generation in the several years. 
uh, like that's why right now it's good to get those kind of titles because you can get those for pennies on the dime kind of thing right now for, for most titles so and then those are gonna skyrocket up in price uh, down the road so that's basically my take to retro Mikey's response uh, this is my response video to that um, I would love it if anybody else would make a response video on their feelings about the retro video game community and if there's a, there's a crash coming up um, uh, and your thoughts on this whole subject about why stores seem to be closing their doors, retro stores that is. Um, so I don't think emulation has anything to do with it. I know a lot of people who are out there buying an NES and all the carts to be nostalgic and they have no clue how to do emulation at all other than buying a mini console and plugging it in and getting the 30 games, that's it. So I don't think emulation is really going to kill anything. It's just going to help the little nostalgic people that want it for a year or so to play the games and then forget about it. People who really want to play the games, they're going to collect the games and stuff like that. There will be people that just emulate, and that's fine. I don't think that's going to hurt the retro community at all. If anything, it's going to help because they're not buying the games. So the games aren't selling. Price is going to come down because stores need to get rid of it. They need to make money. They need to get rid of stock, make room for new stock. So that's my take. Please leave a comment down below. Please do a video response. I would appreciate it. And this has been 8BigGlitch79, and I'm glitching out.